Mighty. Thank God for great praise and worship. Amen. God is good to us. Thank God. Pastor Marcy had a preach in her, so she let, she let it out. I said she could she could get back up after I sit down. And, and, but we we thank God. Amen. She is the woman of God. And uh, we, we just bless God for his goodness. We thank God. Emily is, is back with us this this. Well, she didn't leave and go anywhere, but she just w was not feeling well last week. And so uh, 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 she went in the hospital for a brief time and came on out. We just dismissed everything they said was wrong with her, and then they just let her go and, 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 and told her to hit the door, but be careful. You know? So we, th we thank God. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many of you know his name is above every name? I don't care what they call it. I don't care what they decide to call it. It's just his name is above every name that is named. And so we just thank God for that. And we praise God for that. We, uh, 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 we, we just bless God for you all today. Remember, our special men's class is happening the beginning of October. And then you'll have uh, uh, information soon about the new series of small groups that is coming forth. It's, it's going to be a blast. Uh, get into one of those groups. It's going to be a blessing to your life. That's what we do. And then we come back together for Bible class with me. And uh, that carries us into the year and into the holiday season. But, but I'm just blessed. How many of you just blessed? You know, you just thank God. You just thank God he's good to you. And, 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 we, and don't let us forget, uh, Pastor, forget we're going to pray for Sherry. She has surgery tomorrow. So at, at the conclusion of our message, we're just going to come together and believe for her. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, and that she'll be all right. She, and we're saying it already. She's all right in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anybody got any special blessing this week? You can just say, God did something special for me this week. Amen. Uh, nobody? Yeah, yeah, just, I got one. That's, well, there's always something moving in the earth. Amen. I see two. Amen. Amen. The rest of y'all get busy because he, cause he, he, he waiting to bless you, you know. Are you ready to receive? You know? All right. All right. All right. So we thank the Lord for you. Uh, keep praying for us. Pray for everything that, that's coming up and, and that you're doing. Uh, pray for our kids in school. Amen. There's so much going on, but just keep praying. And since we did our, our bullying thing this summer, I'm just hearing more and more about different schools and their bullying uh, situation. One of them is right down the street at Voyager Academy. Pray for them a whole lot. Um, I was talking to a couple officers at the precinct, and they were saying, Pastor, they stay down there, you know, because there's there's online bullying. They bully each other. Uh, when people don't know who they are, they turn on each other. Yes. And when you don't respect who you are, you turn on each other. And you have to be careful that, that you don't allow it and that when you see it, you diffuse it. Amen. 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 So, so keep praying for Voyager Academy down the street. And then there's one called Dove Academy. It's up. Uh, uh, the junction, I believe it is, down the way, it's, it's the other school. So just make sure we, we cover our kids, you know, and, 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 and a piece will show up and they don't understand what's happening, you know. And, 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 and that's how we need to operate. Our presence needs to be known in the neighborhood. And it is known. They, believe it or not, they watch us all the time in, in this area. They know what we're doing, when we're doing it. Uh, 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 so, so keep praying. Uh, uh, pray for Mr. Stocks across the street. He is our number one watch out man, you know. And because uh, uh, he's he's elderly, but now his his heart is starting to change. He uh, uh, he's just moving a little differently, and I'm watching it move. Uh, so I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Let's receive special music at this time.
yes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring when you walk into the room. Every heart starts burning. Nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. We worship you. When you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. When you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. Nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. We worship Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 You should just grab a hold of that and hang on. Hallelujah. There's sometimes that this is just for him. matters what you're going through, but not then when it's just for him. This praise is for you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand, your word, wherever it is. Repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, 
My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. Thank you that you're here. Help us teach. Help us to speak as the voice of God in the house. We thank you that the enemy is rebuked. Out of our mind and out of our presence. And we thank you for the victory we have. Through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said together, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Yvette. That was real good. Amen. Who are you? Lesson three. Who are you? Lesson three. And without introduction, we're just going to move right into the, the scripture. Ephesians 2.10, New King James Version. First you were sealed, then you were made to sit in heavenly places with him. And now, getting to our, our next one. And it says there, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That preached a whole lot. We're going to unpack that whole statement today. Let's start with, for we are his workmanship. Say with me, I am, I am his, workmanship. his workmanship. So immediately you ought to stop thinking yourself as something of yourself as something less than. Because the word here says in the, the claims of chapter 1 of Ephesians chapter 2 of, of, of who you are, it establishes that you're not just any old body, you are his workmanship. Capital H-I-S, God's workmanship. That's an awesome statement. You are God's, you, 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 you are God's workmanship. However fractured, however you look when you look in the mirror and you say, oh, I need to do this, I need to work on that, I need to do that. You are his workmanship. And when we look at the word workmanship, it translates from an ancient Greek word. I know pastors hitting you with a lot of Greek words, but I do word studies, and so we like to jump down into what, what that scripture means in the original language. And so it broadens it because you understand how they, they, they understood it when it was spoken in Greek. And, 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 and it's funny that the same Hebrew that's spoken now is the Hebrew of the Bible. Yes. The same Greek or Corneo Greek that's spoken now is, is the Greek of the Bible. Yes. So it helps us understand this, 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 this workmanship in Greek means beautiful poem. You are God's beautiful poem. Out of all the great poems and all the great poets, you are his his best poetry. You are his beautiful poema. You are the poem. You are the poem of creation. You are his poema. It gives us the root word poem. It comes from poema. But it started with God when he made you his workmanship. He started the poem. He wrote it. 
When he scooped you out and made you, you was, and he looked at you and pronounced you very good, he started writing the stanzas of his poem. And he looked at you and he said, there is nothing that looks like you. You are my beautiful poem. I don't care how, how, how dysfunctional in so many ways you can be. <laughs> how disenfranchised you may be. He still looks at you as what he made you at. And you are his. Yeah, I'm looking at you. I don't care what everybody else sees, but. I want to see what God eyes. Amen. How many want to see what God eyes? See, if we learn to see what God sees about each other, then, then we can help each other cancel negative stuff in each other's life. I, I, you know what? You're not just anybody. You're, I know you can be a mess at times, but for right now, for right now today, God sees you as, as a beautiful poem. As he writes the stanzas of your life. As he engraves you on eternity. Turn to somebody and say, did you know you were a poem? In operation. Then, then turn and holler at him. You're the workmanship of God. You're the workmanship of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> You're not an accident waiting to happen. You're not a casualty of disease waiting to happen. You're God's beautiful poema. Everybody say poema. poema. God, God, even sound good. Sound good, don't it? Sound better than trash. Sound better than defeated. Sound better than ugly. Sound better than dysfunctional. Sounds better than useless. Sounds better than worthless. Sounds better than neglected. Yes. Wow. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. you poem are you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's going to bless you the rest of the week. Amen. Yes. Somebody tried to call you something else. She said, ah, ah, ah. Oh, if you don't get another Greek word, you're going to have this one down forever and ever. I see it on the corner of your mirror and on your refrigerator and on the side of your camera. I am. I'm the beautiful poem of God. God, I got stuck right there. <laughs> Jerusalem Bible translates workmanship as work of art. Originally, just to be clear, you were not a product of the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> a bang is not a work. Nor did you evolve from a lower life form into a workable person. You didn't climb out of the sea as a thinkless, nothingless blob. But you were his work. How did God do it? God at one time in a series of actions. Yes. <laughs> at one time. He saved you. One time. But in a series of actions. <laughs> Jesus went to cross one time. But there was a series of actions. 
Are y'all there? Does this make sense? Yes. So God at one time in a series of actions created you as his handcrafted work. Look at who you are. Just, just a brief memo of a, of a few things that, that, that are part of your makeup. They keep being this rough. Just bring the poppy. I preach with them on my shoulder. <laughs> bring me some candy. I know how to get them out here. <laughs> them babies. Look at who you are. Here is a short list. Who can duplicate your sight and perception? Who can duplicate it? Even with corrective lens, you see better than most things on the planet. You can gauge things with your eye. You can measure them with their eye. Women in particular have a unique skill where, where guys only see blue, black, gray, red, pink. You all see fuchsia <laughs> and melon. <laughs> you, you, you see the slight in Some may be looking blue, but you'll see the orange in it. How many know I'm right? Am I right, Emily? I can bring something to Emily. I, I do it on purpose because she, she's used to fabrics and working with stuff, and she, she, she sews very well. And so she, she, I'll say, how does this look? What does this look? She said, oh, Pastor, that's a match. That, that, that's a match. And I'm looking at it. It all looked the same to me. <laughs> it's all red. Because we just don't. But, but God gave them that, that uniqueness that they can, they can identify colors and put it together. We argue about colors right now. She can still pick out a better tie than all the ties y'all love. She picked them out. The ones I pick out. <laughs> what? That's sharp. But did she pick it out? And I said, that's a nice tie. I said, dang it. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Yes. Perception, we can see stuff. We can measure it from a distance. We, we can look at it. We can know what it is. We can, some of us, if we pay attention to our sight, if we believe our eyes, we won't even get in an accident. Because another thing you're good at is seeing something moving in the room. <laughs> I'm going to hit uh, Emily again. She told me a story about how something moved in the house, in the living room. And she said, Leroy, I saw something. He said, no, then she said, yes, I did. I saw something run across the floor. I saw something move. I don't say Leroy and Emily got rats. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that time something got into the house. And, and he will dismiss it. But out of her peripheral vision is something about y'all. Before we left home, she saw something. <laughs> she opened her little white bag that she normally carries. Y'all know this is a bag she has with her all the time. And as she opened it, a, a spider just, just, just took a waltz across a couple papers and went back down. Well, you know before we got here, we had to dump everything out. <laughs> because I believe she saw something. Just that quick. That's how great your sight is. Oh, God. And I'm going to tell you something else you see. But stop dismissing it. I used to dismiss it. But I don't now. Because it would help me if, if I allowed it to every time. He has given ministering angels charge over you. And they watch over the children of salvation. Sometime out of your vision, if you catch it just right, you'll see an angel watching you. And you say, what is that? And you just... It's not a figment of your imagination. They're with us. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. For this installation, you are the workmanship. Let me go to some more things. Who can distinguish millions of different smells? 
This sense alone fuels the multi-billion dollar perfume and cologne industry. They can change one slight ingredient and it becomes a multi-million selling bottle of cologne or perfume. Well, cologne is, is not as good as perfume because it's, it's how do you say this? Is it, is it a de tole or a de tole? It's eau de tole. I'm wrong in both respects. Well, eau de tole in French means toilet water. <laughs> that means it's more water in the bottle and alcohol and a little scent. That's why an hour or two after you put it on, you don't smell it anymore. <laughs> if you have to do this to smell it, it's gone. But the difference in perfume is that it has an oil base to it that mixes with the oil in your system. So every time you sweat and it gets oily all over again, you can smell it all day long. And you become known for your scent. Some of you all, we know you by your scent. I'm not talking about a bad scent. I'm talking about the scent. Whatever cologne you wear. I know when Shirley Tutt has been in a room. Yes, yes. Now she got several of them. Yes. Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And the better the scent, the more it costs. Yes. But your nose can differentiate between Dior and Chanel number no. five. Yes. 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 That's how God... God has engineered you so famously. Let's go to another one. Who can duplicate your, your plum-sized kidneys? Who filter all of your blood all day, every day? And in case you, it, it, and, 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 and the only way it stops is that there's an interruption by a disease entity like hypertension or diabetes. That's why there's a, such an influx of dialysis. Yes. And that machine, which is about this big, or the little one that is still bigger than something that's less than the size of my two fists, yes. Yes. that God made to handle you for a lifetime. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You are. Give me something to throw, because here. <laughs> you ain't going to take my sermon from me today. I done worked all night. <laughs> Who can think the way you do? Who can think like you do? You can think yourself into all kinds of trouble. Some of you done thought yourself into a mess. You, you done slick talk yourself into a mess. Come on, y'all laughing. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Don't nobody know but me. <laughs> but here's something else that happens in case you didn't know. You can go to bed with a problem on your heart. And while you are asleep, your brain keeps working. And by the time you get up, you say, I know what I'm going to do. Because your brain needed you to sit down. <laughs> come on, come on here. Okay. Isn't God awesome how he created you? That it, it, it runs and finds the answer. Put the pieces together from the recesses of your mind that's in the library in your head and, and causes you to get creative in your thinking and you lay there and then you get up in the morning and act like you thought of it. But really your brain been thinking while you've been resting. That's how God created you. That's why I don't let the enemy bother your thought pattern at night. Amen. 
Are, are y'all there? Is this, is this blessing anybody? Who can, who, who can imitate the muscle called the heart? My God. With his self-charging battery. Self-charging. Where does the battery of the heart know to pull the electricity from you? To beat. And beat on time. Unless you're in a fib, then it beats off time. But if they zap you enough, you'll get back. Because God does everything. Come on. You want your heart to beat on time, but you don't want nothing else to happen on time. I think I said something there. I don't know what that. This, this area of the heart that beats is called the sinoatrial node. It's in the right atrium. It's known as the heart's natural pacemaker. But if they have to replace your pacemaker, this sinoatrial node, they put this thing in that they have to take out so often control it from somewhere else sometime, but it, it, it still needs a battery. Some way or another, it's mechanical. It has to help with that impulse. Do you understand what I'm saying? But this pacemaker can regulate you even when it regulates you when you are an athlete to a couch potato. That's how God makes it. It just... And keeps you beaten. Yes. You are his workmanship. Yes. David in assessing God's workmanship of himself. He looked at himself and says. This could be a little narcissistic too. I will praise you. He got religious with it at first. <laughs> I will praise you for I am. I don't know whether David was looking in the mirror. Wow, I'm fearfully, and one not, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of me. That, that, that's not what that fearsome. It means I'm so bad. It's like woo. <laughs> and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. What work are you talking about? What are you looking in the mirror? Marvelous are your works. And he said there, and, and, and this is the next blessing after that comment says, and that my soul knows very well. He knew he was the workmanship of God. He said, he said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And my soul knows it. See, so you got to know in your soul. That you are the. I'm not going to mess with you. Because I want you to say it. I want you to know it in your gut. Who you are. You seal. You seed it with him. And you are his beautiful poem. I'm, I'm going on. Because I could. Oh my God. When we fell into sin, God came after the star of his creation with the dearest thing to him, Jesus. He sent a star after the star. God saves us not merely to save us from the wrath we rightly deserve, because we rightly deserve to die, but also to make something beautiful out of us. God's love is a transforming love. It meets us right where we are at, but when we receive this love, it always takes us where we should be going. When we receive it, it takes you somewhere. The love of God that saves my soul will also change my life. Don't say he loved you enough to save you but not change you. Ooh. You say, but not change. That's like saying, God, you don't love me. 
But he loved you enough to save. And what he saved, he loved. Come on. Say with me, I am loved. Because I am saved. Does that make sense? My God. We are his workmanship, his creation, but we are something new in Jesus Christ. The spiritual life cannot come to us by development from the old nature. He didn't fix you up from a broken down life. Or a patched up one. He made you a new species. And what is the name of the new species? It's called the redeemed. In case you want to just say, y'all know how I am. What is our purpose and why were we created in Christ? In Christ. Dr. Miles Monroe set forth some key purpose principles. And I'm going to give you a few of them. The first one is, God is a God of purpose. God has an intention for everything that he does. He is a God of purpose. Everybody say, God, God. is a God of a purpose. a purpose. You're not an accident. You're not just floating through life. You don't have no purpose. You don't know what to do. You can't find yourself. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. That's at year 20. Year 40. I don't know. I don't even have a clue what I'm supposed to do. I just, I don't know. I don't want, I don't. Are you out your mind? You only promised three score and ten and you done wasted them all saying, I don't know. Sometimes you discover your purpose while you're doing something else. There's people that's gone to school to be a doctor. There's a lady in, in reconciliation, she went to school to be a doctor. She's a doctor now. And, 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 and she left that to become a chaplain in a hospital. Somebody said, what's wrong with her? Because the first thing y'all saw was the dollar sign. Uh -huh. uh, but she saw the purpose. <laughs> and your purpose is your place where you are fulfilled. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Something just going, you're going to work there for a season while you get to what you call to do. And don't let anybody take you from your making you into something. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. My God. God created, God created everything with a purpose. It's the next one. Everything has purpose. Everything has a purpose. Don't disavow anything. If it shows up in your life some way or another, there's a purpose for it. My God. The next one. Where purpose is not known, abuse happens. See, a kid who doesn't know how to play, all he does is this when he sees this. Because he does not know the purpose. And anything that doesn't know purpose will go into abuse. When men don't know the purpose of their manhood, they abuse it. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That turned, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When women don't know the purpose of their womanhood, yeah. Yeah. Oh, tell me something good. And abuse plus abuse equals 
That's new math. <laughs> Woo! Are y'all out there? The next one. To discover the purpose of something, never ask the creation. Ask the creator. You keep asking Shirley what's wrong. She the creation. Ask the creator. Because the maker knows what the purpose is. This is good stuff today. Yes. The maker knows. You keep asking people to qualify you, and the best thing they can do is their uses their best words on you, and that depends on how much they like you. Yes. If, they, if they don't like you, they're not going to tell you that that, that that ugly dress you got on is ugly. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to let them run out there and make a fool of themselves. <laughs> Come on, come on. Y'all know sometimes people tell you stuff. You know, when you leave them, you say, I know that's a lie. <laughs> Salespeople run it on you all way. No matter what you put on, oh, that's beautiful on you. <laughs> they work on commission. They'll tell you it look good and you look like and, and s somebody over there running through the, the clothes on them and say, oh child, they don't even know. They need to go in there. Take child, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. They be peeping at you from all over the store. <laughs> Everybody can't wear skinny jeans. I'm sorry. I, I, what you say, Rose? Don't do it, Pastor. Don't. Do it, Pastor. <laughs> Our purpose as saved people is spelled out in 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 in, in the Word of God. In our creation, in our in, in in our key scripture, it says this: We were created in. Christ Jesus for good works. God, that's a mouthful. This beautiful thing God has made us is set forth to be active in good works. Your purpose is linked to good works. Because you are in Christ, you are supposed to produce. When you know your purpose, you can really activate your good works. And maybe you cannot do it because you are misaligned with your purpose. Where well, everything you touch turns to a mess. And we try to make it good when it ain't good. But it's only good for that time, but when, 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 when the test of time hits it, it all falls to pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Yeah. So your good works have to be linked to your purpose. And you can't do good works for the wrong reason. To be vindictive and yeah. to make a point and to act like because it's going to return to you. Because what you do has your IP address. They gonna, it's just going to, in the spirit realm, it's going to trace it back to you. Jeremiah, in conversation with God, received this revelation of who he was. 
Jeremiah 1, 5, 8. And it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That means I established your purpose then. And he said, to let you know that I established your purpose, he said, after that, he said, even at that time before you physically got ordained, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. I sanctified you. I determined to set you aside. That's what sanctified me. I determined to set you aside at that point, and I called you as a prophet in the womb. I'm a, I was a preacher in the womb. Are you there? Well, I know you're tired. I'm going on to a conclusion. This predestined, pre-established, pre-laid out plan is God's purpose for you. Know this, we cannot work to be saved. You don't get saved and you say, I'm working out my soul. No, 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 no. It's in reverse. Once someone becomes a Christian, they prove their faith by their good works. So James says, faith without works is That's after salvation. But then to, to bring it all together, let's run on to Revelation 14 and 13. It said there. This is John talking. He said, then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right. We hear this at all the funeral, but there's some key in here that you should never leave from this day without understanding. Right. Blessed are the dead. The dead ain't just blessed. Everybody that dies ain't just blessed. Blessed are the dead who? Die. Where? In the Lord. In the Lord. Yeah. Why? Because it's still a part of their purpose. Yes. Yes. It's a part of your purpose to die in the Lord. Yes. <laughs> You're not just anybody. Yes. Don't let the devil try to destroy Jesus in your life and make you into something else. Just get over and keep moving because the Bible says, Blessed are the dead who die. Not doing whatever they want to do and big enough, bad enough to do without honoring him and obey. Blessed are the dead. And when Revelation said the dead, that means the dying. Who are the dying? I'm looking at you. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Can I read the next piece? Yes, says the Spirit. The Holy Spirit talking to God. Yes, that's it. Yes, they died in the Lord. That they may, from their labors, everybody say, stop working. Didn't we just read about your purpose is linked to good works? Yes. But your works down here go in. Because he said when you die in the Lord, you rest from your labors. Yes. What about the people that don't die in the Lord? Well, they don't rest. They, they, they don't rest. They hoping for purgatory. <laughs> Another fix-up room. They don't rest. Whew. That's why some saint on the earth still has to intercede for them in purgatory. They, uh, I don't think so. 
But here is the next piece that's crucial that ties in with our Ephesians 2. It, it says, and their works. You resting, but your works is marching. Where do they go? They go into the presence of the Lord with you. What have they become? A testimony that you have fulfilled the purpose that God has assigned to your life to do good works. And that you finished them. That's why Paul said, I have finished my course. See, y'all doing stuff, but is it a finishing work? Is it a good work? Not your work, but is it a good work? Assigned to those that are saved. You go through hell, it's a good work. You were rebuked, it's a good work. You fed the hungry, it's a good work. You built the kingdom in the earth. And them works start running before you. You resting, but they walking. And both of you all meet up together in his presence. And that's when Paul said, as God was looking at him in good works, therefore is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And just in case you get a little nervous, everybody as quick as you can, go to Hebrews 6 and 10. Whew. My God, I don't preach myself happy. Just in case you think God's going to miss your work record. It said, for God is not unjust, stop, to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. God is not unjust to forget. Give somebody a high five and tell them God won't forget. Tell them what he won't forget. Tell them what he won't forget. And your labor of. God won't forget your what? And your what? God won't forget your what? And your what? He's not unjust. No. Blessings to you today. Yeah. Blessings to you today. Yeah. <laughs> Throw them hands up and worship him because you serve a just God. You serve a great God. He won't forget what you've done. <laughs> 